Welcome back. This time let's have a short look at the preset data assets. Presets have one very important application. They consolidate the VR pawns controls. In desktop and mobile environments, the preset data assets have no importance at all. You might be aware that there is already a video covering the VR pawn and how it's controlled by the player. You find a link in the description in case you want more insight on that. To begin, let me just take a short look on the basic concept of pawn controls. So you are aware at which point the preset comes in. Everything starts with a button input in the real world on your VR controller. This is transmitted to the VR pawn. Here the preset comes in. It's specified on the controls component, which is a necessary component for each VR pawn. Actually, multiple presets are, since the controllers of different HMD have different button sets. What the preset basically does is match the button input to a controller function, which then is transmitted to the motion controller and each motion component for execution. Let's start by creating a new preset PDA instance. Choose the PDA VR controls as template. And for good measure, let's add it to the controls component of the pawn we are using. This means we can test our settings right away. Now let's open the PDA instance. The key mapping section here is the heart of each preset. You can enter different key mappings for the left hand and right hand controller. This can be very useful when you have lots of controller functions to manage and only a limited set of keys. I am currently using Oculus controllers, which means I have a grip button, a trigger button, two face buttons and a thumbstick per controller, as well as one menu button. Let's enter them in. Now we know which buttons we have on hand. So let's start assigning controller functions. Each controller function is referred to by name, so make sure you avoid typos. One of the most basic controller functions is the select function. It searches for the select component on the actor the laser currently touches and toggles it. Let's enter select for the right hand and left hand trigger button. Next, let's assign the grab controller function to the grip button of each controller. At this point, we should also select either trigger grip or holding grip to further specify how grabbing works. Holding grip means that the player needs to keep holding the assigned button to continue grabbing an actor. Trigger grip allows the player to use the trigger button for grabbing in addition to the grip button. Face buttons are very suitable for managing the radial menu. As you can see, there are two radial menu controller functions in the RF core. This is because you can define two radial menus on the radial menu component. For more info on that, see the video in the description. Let's assign radial menu 1 to the face 1 button of the right controller and radial menu 2 to the face 1 button of the left controller. Now for the ping controller function. This is especially useful for multiplayer to communicate or mark a location of interest. Let's assign the function to the face 2 button of the right controller. Finally, let's assign the pause controller function. This function is actually very straightforward. When the button is pressed, it pauses the game. Let's have a look at movement options next. Basically, the advanced framework course supports two ways of moving the pawn around in the level, teleport or locomotion. Let's start with teleport. Initially, we need to assign the teleport controller function to a button. Let's choose the phase two button on the left controller, for example. Now the player can enter the teleport mode by pressing the assigned button. The teleport mode has its own controls, which are determined below in the teleport section. Here you have three functions. Execute teleports the pawn to the impact location of the teleport trace. Deactivate exits teleport mode without executing a teleport. And rotation type determines if the player can rotate the pawn during the teleport. Let's for example enter the following teleport controls. Execute on trigger. Deactivate only on execute and rotate by hand. Now the player enters the teleport mode by pressing the phase 2 button, finds a location and chooses the rotation upon landing by rotating the hand and executes by pressing the trigger. The problem with these settings is that the player can get stuck in teleport mode if they don't find a place to teleport to. 
So let's change the deactivation settings to neutral thumbstick. However, now the controls are colliding since the thumbstick is always neutral when the phase 2 button is pressed to enter teleport mode. In short, there are a few ways how teleport controls can interfere with each other. Be careful on which combinations you select. Let's try one last example incorporating the neutral thumbstick deactivation setting. First, let's place the teleport function on the thumbstick up input on the left controller. Let's keep execute on trigger and deactivate on neutral thumbstick and set the rotation type to none, to preve which prevents rotation. Now we can enter teleport mode, teleport if we find a suitable spot, or just exit and stay where we are. You can also move the pawn directly using the move learn functions. They are most appropriately assigned to the thumbstick if your controller has one. Mine does, so I will assign move fluent forward to thumbstick up on the right controller, move fluent backward on thumbstick down, and so on. There are additional settings regarding the movement style on the controls component. For now, we will keep the default settings to keep things simple. Additionally, you can rotate the pawn either fluently or stepwise. Let's create an example for both functions. First, we assign the turn left fluent to thumbstick left on the left controller and turn right fluent to thumbstick right. And for the turn step function, let's assign turn left step to the phase 2 button on the left controller. That's that. We don't have any button left for the turn right step function, but it will suffice for example sake. Let's not forget the haptic section. The float entered here serves as a multiplayer to adjust the haptic response of the controller. If you don't want haptic response, this is not the setting for you. Use the haptics boolean in the controls component. That's all I've got for today. Bye bye and see you in the next video.